Go Invictus, for anybody who was wondering. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh, I, I feel like so like you look at the last time these guys played obviously uh, we saw it be like Vici dominated Inferno 16 to 4 uh, the time before that Invictus won Inferno in overtime um, and then you look at the Mirage history right Mirage 16 13 to Vici it, it, that was the most recent game they played uh, you have to go back a fair wall to get into the previous Mirage head to heads so like all of these maps have been close the last times that they've played them. I don't think it's going to be clear cut for Vichy. I think Invictus have looked a little bit better coming into this tournament. Beating Beyond was definitely a, a good step for them. And straight away in the pistol round, they're already getting the bomb plant. They've already got two kills as well. Vichy trying to mount that retake, getting in here for the long range duel. Zoking, not able to quite land that shot, but Advent was there to finish him off. Unfortunately, that is the only kill they're going to get as Invictus start this one out looking pretty good. Yeah, for sure. And no, I, I think there's definite questions when it comes to the Mirage. Because if you look back to, say, for example, the previous PAL, it was their worst map. Right? Yeah. I think the only team they beat was Lucid Dream. They lost to Tai Lu, Invictus, Divine Vendetta, and even Tiger. Then it seems like they put some work in. The next event, they beat everyone, including Tai Lu, on this map. So, And since then, the only matches they've actually lost on it are to Tai Lu. So I, I'm not really too worried for them. But at the same time, I, I think you're right. This is going to be within close margins. I do still worry a little bit that Bottle coming in, although it's added firepower, it might like, remove some of the more tactical bases of the team because it is relatively early for him being in the squad. And I, I, I still think that the, for Vici, that's the one thing we always talk about with this squad. Like They've got the individuals, they've got the talent. Like Nobody's doubting the likes of Jam Young, Kaze. We've seen Zoe King and Orman for years. Mm -hmm. And, like, realistically, they're also the team that have put in the most work when it comes to strategy. Or at least that's what it seems. Like, Tai Lu, uh, we've never really... Like, obviously, they've got all the smokes and molotovs, like the bare basics that some of these other teams don't have. But they don't necessarily use all of these setups. They just run in and headshot everybody because they're better than them. Whereas, when it comes to Vici, it seems like they try and focus <laughs> Kaze. Well, it's, it's showing that he's definitely got that... Uh, individual skill the headshots coming out from the scout making things a little bit more costly but ultimately the round is done this was a force by so from victus it's not too bad a situation that's not terrible at all you're losing a couple of players to this kind of buy look if it was an eco obviously this would be a great round already for Vici, I think if they can get out of here with a rifle, it's still going to have questionable impact, but it maybe just opens the ability to find some extra kills when it comes to the next round and further damage the T economy. More than likely, though, we are looking at the 3-0 flying. He's gone in. That rifle's safe, and Alan's out of there. Okay, so three kills, rifle saved over. I think that's a, a good round in a way, but obviously, as you were saying, you know, the fact that this is the full buy up or the force buy, it's not somewhere that you want to... Um, like the rifle in the next round, what it's gonna be backed up by a couple of pistols. So, and the good thing here, Tom, you're gonna to be very happy about this. The Deagle's being dropped to Jam Young. It wasn't kept over by Hellman. We didn't see some uh, some ludicrous plays like we've seen in the past. Eva, quite a P250 this round. I I'm never a fan of this. Like, I get, I know the reasons. It's the same that people use the USP as like an option but i don't really like it i think it puts you on too much of a level playing field with your opposition and far too much reliance on teammates if things inevitably go wrong but uh this round it's not really going to matter too much they've gone for a fairly basic push he's now picked up the rifle that was dropped by zao sage and well orman of course is still just looking to try and bring that ak into the next round so all in all pretty standard uh not something i've got to say too much today and yeah, and Victors are going to get their 3 0 start. It's good. You know, when the underdogs picking up those early rounds, this is really what you want to see. It, it's confidence building. You know, Vici are not going to be coming into this series going down 3 0 and thinking, oh no, it's lost. But I feel like when you're the underdog, it can certainly start to, to bat against you pretty, uh, pretty significantly. If you don't win the first buy round, things start to stack up. And the fact that they've saved through the AK means that it does have more impact than I expected. You know, it's like just the majority of the time, 
that you save over a weapon in the second round and your eco, excuse me, on the third, you'll find that teams just get wrecked because your opponents are going to hunt you down usually quite aggressively but i think because of those three kills coming through invictus had to play that a little bit tighter to the chest they couldn't afford to fully hunt down on every angle there's an opening duel by jam young straight away the confidence definitely there swinging straight through the middle the double op set up in the secondary opera the one to open it alman comes in with another and invictus well, they're in dire straits straight away on this first buy round i'll destroy it He's going to try and gain some control around the connector. I've never been a huge fan of the bomb coming out of connector because I think it leaves some serious risks taking it into middle. Kase, though. A whiff shot. Some space gained. Destroyer going ham as he sprays down three. Maneuvering into that A site. I'm sure the remaining players of Vici are somewhat shocked that he's managed to win those individual duels. Nice shot from Jam Young, though. The man who started it all off looking to continue and with Viva missing a shot. He's got to be careful. It's quite a wide peak from Jam Young. He doesn't need to be fighting this. His teammate's still so far behind. A chance for a trade is slim, but he does fall back a little bit more passive. Managed to get himself a defusal, and I imagine they're not going to be trying to juggle the orbs. Yeah, there we go. I was about to say. It just seemed a bit weird that he was like picking up different orbs. Like, now I want this one, and now I want this one, and now I want... Oh, wait, I need to give one to my teammate, otherwise our double orb setup goes out the window. Yeah, sometimes the skins are the most important part. That's what I've learned. Yeah, if, if he could if he could pick them up and then sell it, then I'd agree. <laughs> the skins equal wins at the same time, Tom. There's a reason that they cost so much. Guaranteed to increase your aim. Every euro invested gets you 0.1% better accuracy. It's a fact. Wow, I must have been really bad then because I've increased my... <laughs> <laughs> I've increased my percentage by about three. Well, no, I don't even know. At least three hundred percent. And I still suck. I'm glad I didn't play with you at the start. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, three thousand percent of zero is still zero. Still zero. Yeah, that's that's the thing. You have to you have to actually gain a percentage to get better. Oh, Ooh. that's not gone too well, though. The T's have just gone running into the A site, and they are decimating what was left of Vici. Jam Young this time didn't get the chance to start things off, and Viva holding the angle. Seems like an unwinnable peak, and, well, they're eventually just going to fall off, so Vici at least getting one round, but oh, after that, nothing. Yeah, one convincing round as well, right? That's the thing. They got out there. They started to really swing in with the ops, find every single duel. And this time, Jam Young wasn't able to do a damn thing because his whole team have already died. He's left just saving over towards the B site with Alman and these weapons. They could uh, obviously bring a lot of impact coming into the next round. In fact, they're the sole reason that a buy will even be contemplated. As they dropped over the op, now, does this mean we'll see an investment? No, a pistol dropped. So it's just going to be pistols backing up these rifles. I agree with this, but they could potentially have had Jam Young by himself a FAMAS. He's already got some utility left over from the previous round. Two other players could be in with, I think, one M4 and uh, one FAMAS if it wasn't for the drop pistols. So we would have ended up in, in an all right buy. But this early on in the game, especially with the lead that Invictus have, those kind of investments, those kind of risks can be very costly. And Advent's gone down straight away. Now, he had a very aggressive position on the ramp. Just wanted to spot them. But again, a very wide shoulder peek as he was trying to spot them to drop down the utility afterwards. And with him disappearing from this round, it does leave a pretty big gap towards the A site that the rotates have to come in to fill. Ozzy. Trying to watch the cross. It looks like they're going to attempt to go towards A again. And... I don't really see a way that this gets won by the CT side. Position's not the greatest. Jam Young does still manage a 1D, though. That will at least give a little bit of a position to rotate. Kaze, though, is just meeting smoke after smoke. The Molotov will force Jam Young back too low to try anything risky through it. That is going to allow for an afterplant situation. Now, Jam Young does have a kit. Utility's not the greatest, especially when it's on your AWPA. Like, re realistically, 
that's the one player if they do skimp on utility i don't mind it as much because you're going to be scoped in and unlikely to have the time to set up that many nades ormond though actually going to bypass one of these players the scope's going to be heard destroyer knows that there's a man close and his teammates are just allowing him to face this not quite quick enough. And two combined with a matter of seconds. Orman, he's going to be waiting. Does at least manage a kill, but it, it won't matter in the end. And they're actually trying to hunt him down. Viva's just handed him an AWP, but it won't matter. He died to the bomb. Well, that's unfortunate. A sad turn of affairs as we end up now. Five to one in the lead for Invictus. Vici will get that full buy, though. This is where they can bounce back and really look to deal the damage over towards their opponents. We had a very confident round from them last time. The double op setup used to get some very aggressive positions. Now, I see Advent sat on 4,900, and he hasn't yet bought any armor. They were moving as well, so he's here. He's just uh, not deciding what he wants to buy just yet. Now, I'm wondering, surely they don't glass cannon secondary. I mean, especially not on Advent. No, okay, they've bought up the M4. Thank you. This is, this is what I wanted to see. Look at those ADR bars as well. You're seeing Destroyer. Well, he, he's living up to the name, it's fair to say. Yeah, a couple of quiet starts as well, though. Kaze on just two kills. He's someone that can very much be a catalyst for this team. Someone to rally behind. But I'm more interested by Zalsage's investment into a UMP. I imagine this is going to be a faster play towards the B site. Although, at the same time... You'd expect him to be the one leading the charge. Instead, he's actually taking a fight in mid. Can't say I agree with that at all. Don't know why he had the gun if that's what he was going for. And now they're going to try and pressure B. And the trend continues, Mitch. No effective B site holds have been witnessed other than Techno. And Jamyong, unfortunately, will meet that same fate. One player already made it out on the left side, but he's been spotted by flying and has no idea. So Bottle just swung on him and he must have been frustrated because from his perspective, he had snuck out. He'd managed to go under the radar. And as he comes sneaking around the right side, Bottle just pre-fires him. He's like, what? What? That's the luckiest thing ever. But no, flying had spotted him. He conveyed that information. And with four players still alive, they are hunting down Kaze. They're looking for this man. They can afford to lose two more weapons easy. And up against the op, there's one already dropped. They know exactly where he is, but dealing with him is going to be difficult. They've got a pincer movement, but they've given him the time. Noise needs to be made by Viva. He's coming up, and the swing from behind. That's why Viva needed to make all that noise, so that Destroyer could make that flank successfully without being turned on. And so we go 6-1. to one. No weapon saved over for Vici, which means definitely no investment from them. It will just be pistols. And again, a situation where the Invictus side, they're starting to, to sway some opinion, I think. They're looking a whole lot better than I than even I expected. Than even you, the, the clairvoyant of Counter-Strike. <laughs> the spirit. See, I was going to go with Vici, but then I started to feel a, a disturbance. <laughs> the room got colder as the ghost of Patty O'Shea came into the room and told me, why go. If, what? go with Invictus. Go with Invictus, Mitch. They're going to win the game. Thank you, Patty. May you rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame he doesn't use, uh, you know, his, his power for good. Just for predicting Asian Counter-Strike matches. And it's only Asian Counter-Strike matches. You won't see him on any EU games. He doesn't like those. It's not as wild. Oh, <laughs> you need a bit of entertainment in the afterlife, don't you know? <laughs> oh, God. Well, the pistols have been wiped down. Invictus doing quite well in their anti-ecos, which, well, even in the last match with Beyond, that was something they were struggling with. Tyloo were able to just get away with murder with very little on their plate. And I'll never forget that Zo King is... I feel like he's one of the masters of the 5-7. There's not too many people like you can really say that about. Like most people will switch between the CZ, 5-7, like back and forth, back and forth, depending on the day. Uh, he's been using the 5-7 forever. It's the same way when when I think of a P250, the first person that comes to my head is RPK. Uh, he, he's always using the P250 and 
just to a fantastic level the same way flusher is the one that comes to mind when i think of the cz although there's also that old sort of envy roster that could just do anything with pistols or smiths smiths with his uh nice little orb cz when it was still really op but um yeah zo king's always the one that comes to mind for the five seven hasn't really been able to do anything with it this time is a uh, snappy aim I, I I honestly think his his right arm is one of the the strongest in the world because of how far he flicks his mouse every time, uh, because his sensitivity is like zero point zero 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 one. Oh, Kaze! Oh, that's so awkward. Luckily, Jam Young is actually going to get the trade. Interestingly, the secondary opera has been the better opera of the two this time. Advent, nice hold from him so far, but he eventually gets called by a Bottle. Yam Young in position. Another shot off the back of the AWP. Bottled looking for that trade, but he won't get anything done. Yam Young's been the, the best player for Vici so far, especially with the AWP, which is a shame because, well, the only reason I'm saying that is because Kaze has been absent. Well, at the same time, it feels like Jam Young, you know, he's taken his shoes off. He sat at the table, knife, knife and fork at the ready, and this man is being fed. He's like right there. You know he's on short. Both of you have been ramping and uh, palace for a little bit. No presence on mid. And then they, they just leave it open for that palace peak to come through. And then later just dry swing into him and con as well. Very reckless, I think, just trying to line up an aid like that when you know there's an opera potentially rotated. And even then, on the top mid play, once they catch Kaze off, Jam Young's already made big plays from short with that op in the early round. So you know he's possibly there on this full buy. I think it was just, uh, as I said, very reckless by Invictus. They made that mistake once, and now I think they'll definitely give him a little bit more respect from what we've seen so far. The double up setups come out yet again, but it doesn't help them. Was the smoke execute through to the A site gets complete? Oh, look at this! <laughs> I like that the coordination running around, and it gets a kill as they're over close to stairs. A good start to the retake. And time is ticking, and with the orps in the retake, it's going to be awkward. The thing is, with these faster takes, there's so much utility for the CT side. So they should be able to force some of these players out of angles. They're doing a very effective job. One by one, they all fall. It's left onto Destroyer. I think he's realized there's not really much point. He does have a hell of a lot of money, so I wouldn't have minded if he just tried to swing on the bomb within the last few seconds, but just decides to hold on to the AK. Now, those A takes have been very, very good so far for Invictus. So it's nice to see the Vici actually take a slightly different approach this time and just fall back into the retake. They don't go for anything audacious. Nobody trying to run through the smokes or do anything silly. They've just decided, okay, we're not holding the site. So let's work together to retake it. Yeah, I like that comeback right into the site. And you know, a lot of that, as you can see here in the replays, it just came down to duels. It wasn't even necessarily necessarily the utility that uh, gave them any sort of an advantage or that they capitalized on the advantage, rather. Of course, it did. Exactly as you said, when you make those faster plays, you get in the side. It does leave the utility belts untouched to the CT side. And it's one of the downsides of it. For Invictus 07 on the board, it's already tight. It's already good. They're already happy, smiling and laughing their way to the banks. They look... To build up that economy a little bit more. I mean, it's certainly taken a hit with that previous round. And obviously with how flawless it was for Vici, they're stacked high on cash as they look to defend the A site from what is about to be a crunch through middle. Connector play alongside Ramp and Palace. And they had the players in position, but Advent has started a bit of a rotate in towards the window. Oh, and it might work for them. It looks like they're going to be boosting up. Oh, Advent is waiting patiently. Actually, gonna get smoked off. Okay, that's that's made his position completely null and void. So King does manage to fight one out over towards the ramp. I don't know if he knows that there's a second player around here. It seems like he does. He's desperately low. In the meantime, another player gets picked off. It's trades back and forth, but Viva's orb shot actually gives them the space on the site. 25 seconds remaining for Orman and Kaze and Kaze finally starting to come up. Trump says he will get a second. Holds the line. A double for him. But it's mainly Zoking's ramp aggression that quells that round. And Vici. Oh, they're now starting to come back into this. Four rounds. Money. Mm, it's a bit awkward now for the T side. 
Yeah, it definitely could have been better. It was in a, a pretty shaky spot coming into that round. I think we're probably looking at pistols dropped over by Destroyer. And everybody else just uh, takes those pistols and runs with them. No, it's going to be a hero AK, in fact. Okay, I'm not I'm not against it. Everybody else able to afford semi-investments. Two asset, three SMGs, excuse me, and Viva sticking down on the Glock. Interesting. It's a very, very heavy investment. It does give them a decent chance of taking this round. And so far, the B-holds have been weak, as you said, Tom, in this tournament, let alone this match. It's going to be tested yet again. Well, Jam Young is someone I expect to break that trend, if I'm being honest. A really nice hold from him already. Barely lost any health, and they make that look very, very easy. As I said, like, it, it was sort of, like, more sarcastic the last time they pushed, more than anything. Uh, I, I think Jam Young's been fantastic so far in this match, and realistically, I, I expect a lot more from Vici when it comes to these standard sort of holds, because, as I said, they're the best prep team of any team within Asia. I don't think that's a wild claim by any stretch of the imagination, especially with what we've seen so far. I don't think there's been anyone that can match up against them. I would say beyond impress me, but then, then we watched Inferno and... Wow. It weren't great. Even if it was against Tyler, it wasn't great. So... I'm still sticking to the fact that Vici are the, are the most well-vetted team. Invictus, mm -hmm. though, haven't been bad. Like, there have been some huge solo plays. I think Destroyer has been someone who has brought them back from rounds that shouldn't have really been possible and have kept the economy of their opponents quite awkward. Another thing to note, that even though Jam Young was, was playing well with the AWP, unlike other teams, they're not forcing it. And I, I think that's such a big point. That he is dynamic and it makes him awkward to play against because you don't know what's coming up. Whereas if you look at some of the other teams you've seen previously in the tournament, uh, for example, Tiger consistently forcing a double orb setup that doesn't work, yeah. it, it just shows either lack of experience or stubbornness, which is something that Vici definitely don't have. Cabal, take that up, bro. Go on. Go on. You'll get him this time. <laughs> Tenth time lucky. You know what they say. Maybe that's a Mong Mongol thing, but I've never, uh, <laughs> I've never heard it. I suppose if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. Maybe that's their motto. But we're looking at Invictus on the try, A side. Try, 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 try. try. <laughs> Continue to try till the end of time. Um, so yeah, right there we had the, the push into the A site. There was an attempted flank on top mid, but even then Invictus were watching it. They're ready for it. Cut off the player. Eight to five now on the board. And, you know, anything they get from this point, even from the previous round, is basically a bonus. They've already got the everything like a good half built out um, it's more about just not allowing your opponents to build up all that steam uncontested and feel like you know oh now they're warmed up and they're back in because the mentality of players coming into the second half is often going to be defined by how those last couple of rounds went and if they chain four or five together then it is going to be very easy for them to sit there and say eh, don't worry about it guys yeah we, we we were terrible but we warmed up we're good to go we're going to win this now and you'll find that, that oh my god <laughs> how many mollies just hit bottle there like seven Oh, well, you know, that, that, that is where you keep a Molotov. It's in a bottle. Only on the T side. Well, then that, that's the an incendiary. Hand. You said Molotov. So get out of here. <laughs> fair play, fair play. <laughs> if you want to speak specifics, uh, I will, I will out-specify you. There you go. Oh dear, Viva not quite ready for the angle. Jam Young, again, I I'm liking it. Uh, there is a B defense. Oh, oh, I thought he was going to get wrecked there. He does eventually go down, but it's left onto just one man. It's the man you'd want. Had a fantastic performance in the previous match, although quite enough flying, trying his best to hold on here. But Kaze, why well, he's not even going to spot his opponent, just wall bags him straight away. A sick for Vici. A decent resurgence from what was a 7-1 position. Right, we have to bear that in mind that they started this game very poorly. Pistol loss and a winning a single round. With not many players surviving, being instantly reset, never really coming back from it. They're up to six. And on a map like Mirage, I, I, well, you're normally Mr. Statsman. It, it, would you consider this the most 50-50 map in the game or is it still Dust 2? Oh, I don't have my stats handy now, but I, I would say, yeah. 
I, I think this is the, the map where I see like the closest score lines most consistently. I've just now pulled up the stats and... Oh, I forgot to do the last 12 months. Give me a sec. Black in. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is actually. So Dust 2 is 47.5% CT sided and Mirage is 51.8. Uh, it is the most evenly mapped in terms of T versus CT of any map out there. Oh, it's looking like the 8-7 is more than likely here unless something impressive can be pulled off by Invictus. They are letting this one slip and that's the worry because V... Vici are now gaining momentum, confidence as well. Like you're starting to see some more audacious plays. This one you will have seen all the time in your matchmaking games, hiding on the chair. It's one that should be expected, but I like the fact that Invictus have decided to move away. Bottle actually wins that battle, as said. Very predictable. Arze now going to have to switch his gaze in that direction, which could give space to take control of the connector. It's going to be easier said than done, though, especially with Jam Young back on that secondary orb. As said, he's dynamic. He's switching it up regularly. And they do only have 30 seconds to try and deal with everybody here. And with this crossfire, it's going to be really rough. Jam Young with one man under as well. They need to get past him, which they will. And Viva with the entry. That's huge. And the trades back actually work out in their favor. Now Jam Young has to try and get a little bit more aggressive. And I'm um, interested. Are they gonna fly? They're gonna flash him in? No. What? Uh, they, they were gonna flash him in, uh, but it missed anyways. And Destroyer was waiting left side. They were hoping for the player being on the right. Jam Young has no idea. He just tagged up his opponent, his assailant. And so it looks like he's not gonna be uh, getting all too much done. Nine to six. Good half by Invictus. They have come through with what was a slow time, a slow half when it came to the buy rounds, but that early lead of seven to one certainly helped them out. Now they're looking good to close this one out. Vici really need the pistol if they want to feel good about themselves. Well, decent comeback at least. Still Invictus looking pretty good. CT side start. Not going as well as they would have liked for Vici, but as, as we've said already, like going into the T side, it's not like this isn't possible, especially you win a pistol and a, I would say pretty much this is an identical 50-50 match at that point. Beaver, he's going to get wrecked. I'm pretty sure Zoking was off the ground when he hit that Glock shot, so uh, you got to feel a little bit bad from there, and that's the A side completely under their control. And they are setting up for a retake play, but normally, if, if you're in this sort of retake style, ideally, you want to have not lost a man. Because otherwise, that means all Vici really have to do is trade. Ormond's positioning as well is dirty. Uh, this, this is going to be really tough to get past him. And, well, that's already another one. Leaving it on to just two, Destroyer and Bottle. Bottle. At least with one to his name, but with all of these afterplant positions, I would have to see some serious mistakes or maybe a ninja defuse. Nope. <laughs> shut that one down pretty quick. It'll be the end of the round with Vici taking it. And yeah, I agree with you. This is pretty much a, an even half. If anything, actually, considering the fact that the pistol's now being picked up by Vici, a bomb plant is well in play. They've got plenty of cash. Invictus should be ecoing. We'll look at a pretty close scoreline, right? A one round lead for Invictus when the full buy comes out. But what is more important, but provided they don't force by here, which I, I don't think they will. What is more important is to take into consideration the fact that Vici looked much better in the buy rounds overall. And if that's the case, oh, they have actually forced bought up, excuse me, because they don't want the kind of semi weak investment into the next one. The problem is with that bomb plant and all the players surviving for Vici. They've got a really nice position to play from in this one where everybody has rifles. They haven't gone for a single SMG, so there's not even really any advantage to play with for Invictus in going for this force by. Whereas if, for example, Vici had gone for three SMGs or four, as we see sometimes, that would then be a, a massive advantage to the Deagles, uh, certainly on ranged fights and then even close range, the ability to spam up if they use their numbers. It could definitely um, sway the round in their favor. Ooh. He's got the shakiest aim in the universe. <laughs> it like it just it doesn't make sense to me. 
how he plays like this and is a, a professional. But then again, it's like, if I ever played on like Woxic settings, I don't think I'd ever get a kill. Like it, it, it's ludicrous. Like just how high his sensitivity is and how good he is off of it. But I guess, I guess that's always the greatest argument. Like you hear about people regularly like downloading pro settings and like, oh, how, what can I, what settings can I change to get better? It's like, honestly, the best thing you can do is just stick to something that you think works and just train that for a couple of years. Like if you just keep switching regularly, the likelihood is you'll never get better at the game. Well, I remember speaking to Madden about his sense because he plays on just, I and mean, I noticed while I was, it wasn't even while I was watching him play, as we were at a Wii Play event and I was watching the screen and just whenever we're watching him, it looked so weird. You know, something just felt wrong about it. And so I was talking with him and I, I can't remember the numbers, but it's an insane sense. And there's only pistols here, right? They're not, they're not going to get caught off. Right? It's all good. They're very nicely cleaned up. Um... Yeah, so keep in mind, I play on 1.6 in-game sense and 400 DPI. So I'm pretty low sense. Big mouse, Matt. Need a lot of space. He's 802 sense. So 800 DPI, two sense. Oh, I think he's changed then because it used to be higher. I think it used to be uh This is according to random website. So right, okay. So maybe not. ProSettings.com. It was, it was definitely higher is. than that because he told me that he plays, he, he started playing with his keyboard on one knee and a mouse mat on his right knee using his, his so, knee as, as a table. So, um, what so, six is sixteen hundred DPI at one point five cents? Yeah, it's like four times what I play on. Because <laughs> I remember Matt, the guys were saying to Madden at one point. This is what he was why he brought that up. He was saying that they had told him to play on a lower sense because he said he asked me, "Have have you ever noticed that when I when I have to micro adjust onto someone's head, I miss the shots a lot, but I hit these flicks." I was like, yeah, it's like, I love your flicks. But yeah, sometimes you're like, dude, come on. He has to spray to get a kill because he can't hit the first shot. And he's like, yeah, that's because I can't physically micro adjust on my mouse because it moves so quickly um, that it's like if you try to move a pixel, you've got to move an atom on your mouse. Um, and he was like, yeah, they told me to, to change it, but I can't because I've been playing like this. Supposedly, Spy Leader plays on 2000 DPI at 1.85. That's Jeez. nuts. I don't know if that's true. That's an HLTV thread. But if that is true, that is insane. Feels like he, he's just doing that to set a record. Be like, I play <laughs> on the highest sense. <laughs> it's cost all that... me a lot of kills, but I play he's on the highest the sense. He's the only people. Like, he, he'll be one of those dudes that's like, I actually need the, the mouse to have 10,000 DPI. Otherwise, I can't play Problem. He should just <laughs> do that. Just like change his sensitivity to like zero point something and just play on like 10,000 DPI just for the banter. He could be the, what, the one guy that can actually promote all of the stuff that those mice have, where it's like, it goes up to 4 million DPI. It's like, that doesn't help me, though, does it? <laughs> like, why do I ever need the that? The lower DPI is the better, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing, Supposedly. Like, well, it's more accurate sensor, right? Reading? I like, don't know. Like, I'm guessing that the only purpose of having your DPI on 3200 is if you don't have a lot of space that it can um you know help you use your mouse mat or maybe if you've got 10 monitors you need to go to the right one real quick zoom oh zoking is 1600 dpi 2.7 cents oh my god what? yeah but i think that's i think that's kind of normal because in like eastern europe and i guess in asia as well a lot of these guys will have started I, and again in the old days as well even look on the at the stages the way they used to be a lot of these guys will have started with very little space like they'll probably be the family computer and they like maybe didn't have a desk which is what madden had like um or like your mo you know your monitor stand would be the size of your desk Ooh! that was beautiful by viva yeah 1v2 it's possible it's workable for jam young but vici 20 seconds they've got a little bit of time to play with coming through the smoke he's caught and taken down invictus they're right back on the board yeah i think uh I think that's more normal in like Eastern Europe and Asia than it is in in Europe because I think Wasn't the conditions it? in those lands were always Wasn't it worse. Flusher, who who has like it, his setup was really weird because he used to play against a wall, and he didn't have enough room to move his mouse properly, so he just had a higher sensitivity. 
There's loads yeah. of players like that, though. But then there's always the ones that have, like, like, there's some people with really weird key binding. Was it Maniac played Inverted? No. Was it Maniac? No way. Was it? Or was it Existence? There was someone, with, like, there's someone who for ages played Inverted. I might just be making that up about Maniac. I've heard but... someone played Inverted. I don't think it was Maniac. But there's some weirdos out there. <laughs> Well, like a Ooh. lot of people, and a great argument actually for it, they use ESFD. So, well, for anyone that has a non-English keyboard, basically whatever you use to move, one key to the right. They just shift it all over. And a great argument for that. It's Quake players mainly that started it, like Unreal Tournament, because you need access to all like 10 weapons, right? So you need to be able to quickly yeah. flick and you get more keys around you to do it. And it's a really good argument because even in Counter-Strike, you could have all your nades there. So you don't need to go up or whatever you can just go slightly left slightly right it opens up a lot more possibilities i think it's it is the way to play it's not how i play but i think it's the best way to play probably like well, still, still hands up this will be the last thing i mentioned but uh the weirdest person i know is actually jordan uh who you also know albatross yeah he uh he uses his thumb on his left hand to click left shift now i want everybody at home to try and do that and realize what? how much that hurts Oh, what? Uh, WSD. Is... What? Yeah, he is a lunatic. He is insane, and I'm going to leave that there. I want, I I want all of you to hand. just try that. WSD, then try and click left shift with your thumb and realize how much of a weird human being that guy is. Hold it. Hold it as if you're shift walking. That hurts. Yeah, it's it up does. my neck. This is a fast play from Vici, though. After what was a really good round from Invictus, they have just been destroyed, and look at where Jam Young is. They're going to run straight into him. It's left on to destroy it. He's trapped. He's hit the leg shot and eventually will finish his prey, but he's being hunted. Will the destroyer get destroyed is the real question. He's going to try and peek in, and the answer is yes. He's, he's ruined. There was legitimately no way out. Maybe if he got a collateral kill and hit one more shot, he could have made it, but that was, that was it. That was his only chance. The stars didn't align and were again on even territory. This has been a tight match. And that honestly fills me with fear for Invictus, the fact that it has been so close, just because, again, they had a 7-1 start. When you have that kind of a lead and you end up tied 10-10, to it says that Vici, have, first of all, they've got the momentum in their favor for sure. But also the fact that they've managed to do that definitely sends the message that they are succeeding when it comes to the late half, that they're coming in on the buy rounds and dominating. And that's a problem. If you're Invictus, because I uh, kind of want to win this map, don't you? Well, they're not going to be able to do it in this round, or shouldn't at least. It's only a few pistols, a little bit of Kevlar invested, and... Stacked around the connector. It's an interesting hold. It's, it's sort of a bait and switch. I like stuff like this, though. Like Try something a little bit more audacious. Flying might even have the chance to sort of swing round, and they are going to go pushing into the stack, but soaking. It does explain why his aim is so shaky. Because that, that's something Blair mentioned in the chat as well. Like, why does he move his arm so much if, if his sensitivity is that high? I feel like he shouldn't need to, but <laughs> you could just see the way that it shakes. It has to be a high sensitivity for that to be the case. Flying. Oh, nothing. Not quite. A flawless round will boost the economy back up for Vici, which was damaged a bit over the last few rounds. And now the CT side really start or need to start making their stand because mm. they are in a bit of an awkward spot now. Yeah, as I said, you know, you could tell by the time we ended the first half, once the pistol went to Vici, it was a bad sign. But then you hope that maybe on the CT side, Invictus reach more comfort on these buy rounds and we've seen viva definitely step it up at times he's got the op in hand this time and he's gonna look to do a little bit more i'm looking to flying to really carry them across the line though destroyers had a very good start to things over in that first half the whole team's kind of cooled down since Looking at a plan for Vici again. Smoke execute into A very early on. Quite a lot on the utility belts of Invictus as they look to push back in. Zoking, he wanted to get aggressive through that smoke, but I th I'm guessing he just didn't have a flash because no one has it one anymore. And on the back of that, he decided 
Uh, it's not really worth pushing up. Instead, he's leaving himself exposed to connector, but as Advent falls, he now has to make a move, and it's straight into an op that he goes, getting shut down by Viva, and this retake, I mean, it's time limited, 15 seconds on the clock, two kills left to find. Jam Young's gonna look to swing and take them down. They're on the defuse, they've come off it, what? and they're running right into Jam Young. He's taken them all, and it's done. He's won the round, there's no time. He has actually just won it with a massive spray down. Vici, 12 on the board. And Invictus have got to be gutted. Yeah, ja Jam Young's hard carrying at this point. 26 and 13. The man is unstoppable. And this is, well, this is what we want to see from him. That is utterly ridiculous. Like every other player on his team just gets picked apart, ripped to shreds. It all looks just too easy here. Even the peak out from Kaze towards the end. I didn't even notice he was there, I'll be honest. I didn't even realize he was still alive because of how much Jam Young just did. And now they're gonna try and just brute force this round. They've gone running straight in. Zo King's like, nah, I don't, I don't want you out fragging me by this much. I'm gonna try and get some eco frags. Instead, it's still Jam Young alongside him. Kaze as well with the rifle instead of the AWP. And while Bottle tries something cheeky, but he's met by the same man once again. Up to 28 kills. Looking like another potential 30 bomb. We've had a fair few in this tournament. A lot of players getting to that 30 mark. Are a couple even getting to 38. One of them even getting to 38 and losing, which, uh, yeah, that, that it really is a rarity. So there you go. He's, he's even going to get himself a, a drone, which uh, I think is definitely deserved. The man is playing Unreal. Yeah, now, d don't worry. Don't worry. This is not a zoner drone. The drone disappears. No one can access it. Coaches are, are stuck on their POV. That's as far as we know. <laughs> I don't think anyone's quite got the balls to do that anymore. They've been hunted. But the Invictus side are being hunted down. And this has been a disaster, really, of the last couple of rounds. That one especially. I mean, that is a real... A real downer, to be honest. You know, you come in, you're getting right back in there. 5v2, picked off every single player. I mean, the entirety of the setup for the T side in those post plans was for Advent to shut them down as they came running through um, jungle. And he failed. As soon as he did, Zoking was dead. And it felt like, okay, this round is theirs 100%. And then one by one, they swing on in. And one by one, they fall as Jam Young becomes the one to kill them all. Well, not all of them. I mean, two, two survived. But one died at the bomb after. So, you know, it was... Basically all of them. He won the round either way. And as Vici look to shift gears in towards the A side, they've lost control of the ramp, obviously, after that early duel, but they've decided now to go in for the retake of control. Flying falls straight away. A man we normally look to to deal a lot of damage. Viva, the timing, it's terrible. He pulled off ramp just as Jam Young walked out. And now he's posted up on as he comes up above that smoke. He's flashed. He's out in the open. No one's dealing with him. No one was looking. Bottle? Hello? This guy's just ran through the smoke. He didn't care. That's like, you know, in a... Oh, okay. <laughs> 1v2. This is doable. 30 seconds left. He's going to just jump through to the site. Get a little bit of control over here. Molly for top of Tetris. As he looks to isolate the player over towards jungle. Smoke goes down. He's not found anyone just yet, though. He's inside the smoke, tapping the bomb. He's going to be sticking it. Four seconds. But they hit that shot. They had a nice crossfire on it anyways. And enough bullets to spray on through. A bottle in that situation looked to me like, you know, when you're in a, a single player game, let's say it's like Battlefield or something, right? And you're holding down, you're doing this, the single player missions. You're holding down a fort. And you're like peeking over, sniping people. And then a wave of your troops run in and they all just die. And it's for dramatic effect. So you can just see them all fall in front of you. That's what bottle was. This guy just ran through the smoke. Viva's still there. Like, I'm just going to take a second, line up another shot, see what I, And he's like, ah, just running in. <laughs> charging but uh, unfortunately it, it didn't quite work well the unfortunate truth is it's just pistols however it is mitch's favorite set of pistols the four digs cuatros de glelos that's uh officially how you say it in spanish we don't need any of you people to come in and correct I, I would i would like to call the it cuatros dinkos i think uh, i think it fits quite nice <laughs> There's cuatros de gelos. I don't know how you actually say deagle in Spanish. I guess it's deagle. To be honest, it feels like Probably. it's one of those words. 
Like, oh, there's a player running out through the molly. All right. Well, destroyer. He's being destroyed. Oh, Unfortunate what? by bottle. He's missed all the shots. And oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Jam Young headshot. I thought Ad Advent had got that kill. Jumping. <laughs> it was someone else. Thank God. Seen enough jumping headshots today. Don't need any more. Jam Young's hit his 30 bomb, by the way. Just in case you were wondering. He, uh, 30 and 13. Um... Yeah, he's been the difference maker. More than just, like, padding those stats, it, it's been incredible rounds from him, and there has been no one to match up. Destroyer's been pretty good, but uh, nowhere near the level of Jam Young. And then these are the sort of games you want to see from him. Like, if, if you get this and maybe a couple of other players, you might actually have a shot at beating Ty Lu. But, um, 15 to 10. Bear in mind, this is also the pick of Invictus, and uh, Nuke is next which is one that there is an 88% win rate. And even, I think that they played them recently over the last month or so, I think four or five times and only lost it once. Destroyer, though, is going to kick things off, but he's burnt down to two HP. His teammate's gone and he will fall as well. Zoking on these entries has started to catch up to Jam Young, which is why the, the pace of which they've started to end this game has been increased. Jam Young lurking actually doesn't hit the shot. I haven't ha had to say that too much throughout this game. And, in fact, now the CTs are in with the chance once again. Yeah, they've got one shot, one opportunity to seize this round. Now, let's see if they can capture it. It looks like Vici might be letting it slip, but Zoking comes in to try and get something done. Smoke off. It's only one player left. It's Viva with an op and he's gone. Oh my. Even in a round where it looks certain that Vici are going to fall apart with the low HP on both players, they still just can't lose. That is 16 to 